Hi, this is Mike Rogers with Xenos. Today, I'd like to talk to you about event transforms. To begin, we'll need to have an understanding as to what transforms are. At its most basic level, a transform is a piece of Python code that is executed by the ZenEventD service. As such, a working knowledge of the Python programming language is expected, but you don't necessarily have to be a developer. Transforms can be as simple or as complex as you're capable of making them. Since the ZenEventD service is at the midpoint of the event pipeline, transforms are applied in flight before events are written to the events database. Transforms can be applied to all events received by Resource Manager, whether they're generated by actively monitoring devices or received from external sources, as in the case of traps and syslogs. The primary purpose of transforms is to alter and enrich events. This can range from recalculating the value of a field to including links to your company documentation site or wiki. They can be as powerful as you can design them. If you'd like to find additional information about event transforms, there are some resources at your disposal. The Resource Manager Administration Guide introduces event transformation in Chapter 9 event management. If you're going to be writing event transforms, it's highly recommended that you familiarize yourself with the rest of the contents of this chapter. The Xenos Wiki has a lot of information and examples of event transforms from the Xenos user community. As such, they are to be regarded as examples only until you have tested and vetted them. They may need modification to work in your environment and should be thoroughly tested before you deploy them in a production environment. With that word of warning out of the way, this page covers several examples to give you an idea of the capabilities that event transformation has to offer. Here's a transform to make threshold violation events on interfaces easier to read. While this one performs a similar function for threshold violations on file system components. In addition to product announcements and helpful articles, the Xenos knowledge base also has some good information about transforms. In particular, this knowledge base article shows you how to dump out all of the transforms on event classes and class mappings currently saved in your Resource Manager instance. This is a great source of sample code that you can use to get started. Note that certain versions of Resource Manager and even certain versions of Zenpacks may ship with different transforms. If you have multiple Resource Manager instances and your transforms list doesn't match between them, check your product versions change logs, or Zenpack documentation as needed. If you have specific questions and you're a Xenos customer, you can reach out to Xenos support. If you're a community user, you can reach out to the community forums or visit the Xenos IRC channel on Freenode. To begin working with transforms, we'll need to go find them. You can find transforms under the Event Classes heading of the Events page. Simply select the relevant event class, and then choose Transforms from the drop-down menu. If any of your event class mappings have transforms, you can double-click on the mapping instance and find the transforms under the Transforms tab. This mapping is also an excellent place to demonstrate a key feature of event transforms. Inheritance. Just like properties on a device class are inherited by child classes, mappings and event classes inherit transforms from their parent event classes. Each parent class applies first in top-down order, and any mappings to a class apply last. For example, if we set the transform for the perf event class to 
evt.message equals this is an example of inheritance and then click Save. We can then navigate to any child class or mapping and see the inheritance. Since transforms are inherited, it's important to place your transform code at the lowest, most specific level. If you want to transform, for example, perf snmp events, put the transform under perf snmp, not under perf, and certainly not at the root event class organizer. By being as specific as possible, you limit the scope of events that might match and therefore reduce the load on the event processing system. A handy new feature of the event transform edit field is the ability to validate syntax when you click save. For example, it will warn you when you're missing a closing quotation mark. It's equally important to remember that this feature won't protect you from a bad idea. When ZenEventD is processing an event, it applies context to it and provides that context to your transform code. All events being processed will provide access to the EVT context, that is to say, the event itself. If the event is for a known device that you're already monitoring, you'll have access to the device context. Finally, if the event is for a component of a known device, you will have access to the component context. When you're programming a transform that uses one of these contexts, program defensively. Before referencing a field or attribute, make sure that it exists as part of your logic. For example, this perf file system transform checks for the existence of the evt.eventkey field and the component context before doing anything else. If an event were to arrive at this class without those minimum requirements, the transform wouldn't waste any time processing it further. These contexts come from the Xenos model data store, allowing you to use modeled attributes of devices and components. For example, this same transform references the block size attribute of the file system component. Keep in mind that this model information can and will change between device classes. Just because an attribute exists on one type of device or component, don't assume that it exists for all types of device or component. Here's another example of context checking. This sample transform from the Xenos Wiki is designed to drop trap events from devices in the network switch device class. In its first line of logic, it checks that the evt.agent field to see if the event sourced from Zentrap. In the same line of logic, we also check the event context for the network switch device class. And by using the starts with Python method, all of its child classes. Now that we've established what can be done with transforms, what should we avoid doing with them? Well, we've already covered two important points that bear repeating. First, apply your transforms at the lowest effective level to save processing time. Second, validate attributes before you reference them to avoid processing failures. The third, and probably most important warning we can give, is to avoid external calls in your code. Python is rather famously referred to as a glue language, so there may be temptation to connect your transforms to other tools. The problem comes when these external tools are unavailable or slow to respond, and the entire event processing chain 
bottlenecks at your transform. Avoid using transforms to apply model updates, query external databases, or search for existing events in Zen Event Server. A slow response can quickly lead to a backlog of unprocessed events and loss of visibility into your infrastructure. Naturally, I have not included any examples of this behavior here. When it comes time to test a transform, you may need to generate an event for processing. There are several ways to accomplish this. The first, and easiest, is to use the Create Event button on the Event Console. If you have command line access, you can make use of the Zen Send Event tool detailed in the Event Management chapter of the Administration Guide. Let's do some testing now. I've already taken this example from the wiki and altered it to suit our test instance. This transform would normally drop all trap events on specific interfaces. Instead of dropping them, let's alter them instead to confirm our transform logic is catching the correct events. We'll change the last line from evt dot underscore action equals drop to evt dot summary equals dropped by transform on perf interface event class plus evt dot summary. Then we can click save. This will add our message to the event summary where it can be easily searched for from the console. If you have access to the Zen Event D log, you can add log lines to your transform. Let's add the following to our unknown event class. Log.info, this is an example of logging via transform. The Zen Event D log will show you the output of any logging lines you've added. In another terminal session, I have a loop running to send trap events to my Zen Trap service. Since these don't correspond to any particular event class mapping, they're arriving in the unknown event class and triggering our log line to write out. If I tail that log, we'll see the message being relayed. The Zen Event D logs will also show you if a transform has failed to process or if the transform took more than two seconds to process. If you're debugging a transform, tailing this log can be very handy. To get you started, I've included links to all the resources used in this video below. Happy transforming, and thanks for watching.